what kind of man are you? Sometimes there's an ancient genetic murmur, a quiet call to battle for a tribe, but whose and where? Sometimes I just want to be seen by other men, silently nodded to, their confidence settling sweetly around my body like carpenter's dust. And at other times, I want to rise up alone, stealthy, below radar, becoming speed, wind, smoke, the whole Camelot. Tonight, though, darling, allow me my exquisite sensitivity so we can draw out another dream of man. In that dream, I envy women their extravagance, wind-tossed white skirts like sparks from a welder's flame, dangerously high red heels, heady with 21st century possibility, their ownership of birth. But then at other times, I want manhood, old school, its mastery, lineage. At 3 a.m., long before the sun, when night terrifies, I lie breathing, summoning my bones, my good cold iron bones, like the undercarriage of a chariot, rocking, lifting, and I'd rise to face anything, anything for you. Monkeys. A sour reek of jock straps rises around the double A team at airport security, and I smile at the young men's camaraderie, their easy muted laughter, which stand them apart as a small country that believes in itself. One guy grabs another's cap, my bloody lucky toque, clean off his shaved head, and wigs it up and away into the cavernous airport firmament to tribal cheers. And I think of World War I and how bored the men were, and how one wrote in a letter, I'm looking for anything to happen, and how sometimes I'm looking for anything to happen, yearning to risk my life or just take a puck for no other reason than perhaps brotherhood. And as they yip and pitch the cap back and forth, I recall seeing P.K. Subban lead the pre-game practice of the Montreal Canadiens in Buffalo, cannoning the puck at near impossible angles into the net, an ecstatic geometry, when all at once a frequent flyer in a tall suit, sleek trench coat draped over his arm, leans in, comradely, motions to the two black women at the security desk and says, Look at those monkeys. And I feel something like a reversal of falling in love. My body suddenly skinnier, fumblier, rubber chicken-like among the assembled Adonises. Even an eyebrow raised, even saying nothing, will name me conspirator. And I hear myself say, monkeys? My voice small, does he even hear it? The cap flicking past, louder now, monkeys? He jerks back. Someone up the row moves, and one at a time, each of us inch our suitcases and bags, our cargo of eye masks, pajamas, Cialis, sleeping pills, toward the two women in front of the x-ray machines, one now frowning down over an open laptop, her gold hoop earrings catching the light. And she looks up toward us, tells us to lift our cases to the rack, leave any liquids and aerosols or sharp objects, and come forward. Conventional. Antonia, with the shirt reading, The Future is Female, is friends with Kathleen, who's a glow from a fruit diet. I'm friends with both of them, and sitting here at the bar, their badass beauty, their whip-smart love, turns me inside out, like I'm an emperor in pauper's jeans. Peter the Great, hanging in his dungarees, royal in my little life. But last week, Kathleen called. Voice a small animal. It's about Antonia, she says. She's, she's just not around these days. I've grown too unconventional, I guess. I made my listening a chair. I can't do anything else. Kathleen separated from her man, but lives in the same house, bed, roosts there with their daughter. They're intimate, love each other, but she seeks other lovers, men and women. Eight years, Kathleen says, motioning to our friend at the other end of the bar, ordering a stout. We drank wine after our kids were in bed, went out some Fridays and danced till three, 
strolled our strollers through Kensington, drinking coffee with trucker's pills. Eight years of that knowing look, these things keep you alive. And here we are, I feel, the three of us, straining at the seams. We're still friends, she says of Antonia, who's just gone to pee, but the friendship smells different. I touch her arm, keep quiet, as an opened bar fridge bathes us in neon. I want us all to be queerer. I want us all to love each other, regardless of how odd and otherwise our lives are, I am. I want to flirt with men freely at the bar, be unheeding, unedited, unconventional. I rise, ask about the bourbons. The bartender has pert and God-given breasts, a ragged beard, a lantern tattoo, motherfucker arms. It's late, love, he says without looking at me, rubbing his eyes. It's a Tuesday last call. He's the bravest body in my known universe. It's late. Winter Swimming for Arthur Davis. I never asked you how it felt to have ice for a ceiling. How after you hacked open the crisp skin of river and lowered yourself in, you could see. I never asked you how large the crack was. If your yellow towel lay close by or half a mile in or how much warmer the water was than the air at minus 20. How it felt when your fingers became cones and rods, flesh iris white under the skin of the Ottawa River. Or how, when you lost the hole, Jack screamed your name and hacked a jagged mouth into the white, water coughing through cracks, the irony of snowflakes building up on his axe. I never asked you how your fingers knew they were finally useful and how they felt scraping for the brittle ice above, without a compass, without stars, or how cold the air was when your hands finally tore open the ice. Facebook, open group for men. There needs to be more than just a few like buttons. Jack on the internet. Click if you hide your smile. Click to say, fatherlessness is an illness that calcifies. Click to note the subtle emergence of an inexplicable hard-on. Click to register Amélie levels of mawkishness. Click to say, four pints in, I love you, man. Click to express undiluted wonder. Click to register that in this moment, you're angrier than a caged rhinoceros with an infected kidney, a plastic Perrier bottle stabbing your front left hoof, and a gale rattling the zoo's shutters, making the parrots screech. Click if you want peace, the kind of peace that rests its head like a leaf fallen, resting on another leaf. Click to log cool delight. Click if when you see a pic of her arctic lake eyes, a green chiming sounds in your bones as if they've been struck with a tuning fork. Click to pluck love from wild fear. Click to shout out to the waitstaff at the Crooked Star on Ossington that everyone should read themselves bedtime stories from James Hollis's Under Saturn's, Saturn's Shadow, in which, at 14 years old, the boys in a South American hill tribe stay out all night in the forest until their bodies are bloated by bites and their pain becomes a trance, and they see their deaths, know the limits of their skin, that they are shining and alone. And when they return to the tribe, they are placed in the knowledge that they dwell in a constellation of others. Click if your genius is tucked right in there, just behind your wound. Click to ask, will the easeful Saturday night camaraderie of watching hockey be enough? Click to mark when three black cars in a row appear like artifacts of timelessness. Click for all those who are divorced. Give it up. Click when your lawnmower blade hits the steel tap in the grass at full whirring spin and the bent metal screeches almost human. Click to turn up the bass. Click to register that one theater of your mind suddenly darkens to regret and you put your hand out into the black of 4.41 a.m. as if to touch another's hand and that some presence is there, 
though you're not sure if it's ancestor, night, love, or wind. Click that you survived. Click that you swallowed it, bones and all. Click because the cool spring light is splashing against the window like an ocean wave that has traveled far, so far to get here. Click to sign the petition, I am the captain of my soul. Click to say, this morning I'm so far from my body, it's as if it's in another country. Click to shout out that you found the perfect pair of Italian shoes. Click to dance the apocalypso. Click to salute basement time with friends, getting fried on bottle tokes, listening to Led Zeppelin guitar mantras, rocking your head just a little. Click to express mixed feelings about the man born in a woman's body who took his first course of testosterone and said in an NPR interview, Has flirting changed? Hell yeah. I used to be interested in the book a woman was reading on the bus, or her shoes, her eyes. Now I want to have her. That sudden. I think of nothing else. Re-click to sign the petition, I am the captain of my soul. Click to register the thought that feminism cannot thrive without men. Click again to register that gender exists only in relationship and is as unfixed and unbounded as water. Click to wave to my friend who is digging his own grave in a two-day shamanic workshop outside of Flesherton with a spirit guide named Jeb, who is part Cherokee and part Irish, and who has promised to stay with him until he stands tall in his own grave as the sun rises over him. Click if you're making it all up, just like the rest of us. Click if you have the wounding, the bites and the burning, but not the transformation of high school. Click if no tribe was waiting for you after grad. Click here to learn how to be nine again, 12, 15, 18, 22, 36, 41, 55. Click here to say, man, this is cold sober now. I love you. The Little Door. As I watch from the train, the sun unlocks the doors of trees. I left your apartment before dawn, only the lights of Montreal street lamps and a few dive bars left awake. I still sense you, pine, mint, the weight of your head on my chest, the clouds from the window moving southeast. I am in the center of my life. I am held in the palm of the oldest story. Mark me, I said last night, and in the center of my life you entered. Now there is a little door of pleasure and pain. If nothing else is possible, may the wind be kind to your weather vane heart. And may I remember that I asked for this. Is the key the body? Is the door the mouth? The passage beyond is bare, sunless, requires slow walking, hands passing along unseen edges. Nobody knows where it goes. Nobody has ever been there. You bring dawn, fields, fear, lavender, brazenness. I'll bring the rocking of trains. You bring spring, fire, your mother's knitting needles, your heart's comfort with the dark. I'll bring snow from winter mornings, kerosene, tall pines listing in the dark, a bow, an arrow, iron, and a willingness to bend. And the lamps, you bring yours. I'll bring mine.